let's just kick things off, shall we? So today's an all non-rotating format day. We've got a couple of Pioneer decks and a couple of Historic decks. A little bit shorter stream overall than the marathons we've been doing. We are kicking off with um, 8 Rack or Mono Black Discard, whatever you want to call it. So this is a deck based around the card Shrieking Affliction here. At the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, that player has one or fewer cards in hand. They lose 3 life. We've also got... Four copies of Davriel Rogue Shadow Mage has a very similar effect, but can also help them to the opponent's hand. You know, Beetle, this deck doesn't actually seem terrible, right? Like, Fatal Push and Thought Seize are arguably some of the best interaction in this format. Like, Murderous Rider is quite good as well. And honestly, compared to some of the issues that this style of 8-rack discard deck has in Modern, Croxa might actually go a long way towards solving problems that the archetype has just because this is a card that actually kills them, which is, that's that, the kind of archetype problem. Like, you take all their cards away, and then they just, like, have infinite time to draw back out of it. And Croxa is a card that, like, can actually put them in the ground after you've taken all their stuff away. Hey, Ag, good morning. Let's go ahead and dive on into a league with this one and see how it goes. Interested to see what the the view count ends up being for Historic today. Standard numbers have been very good, so I'm curious to see if that's specifically standard numbers or if that is hype around Arena in general. Depending on what those metrics look like, that'll determine how much Historic we probably do next week. Hey, that's great, JMP. I hope decks like that can be competitive. I think that would be good for the format. Matt said he was doing well on the ladder with it, too. And, like, we did have a good run. Red Agger is impossible. Yeah, that I believe. Wild Slash, Dig Through Time, Bone Crusher Giant. Alright, well we'll take their we'll take their card advantage. Actually, maybe I'm supposed to take their Bone Crusher Giant, because that's their threat. Yeah, I think I messed up. Because I have this other thought season in my hand, I'm supposed to take Bone Crusher Giant there. 10, 10 out of 10 is supposed to take Bone Crusher Giant there. Would definitely have time to take the dig through time later. Yeah. The fact, the fact that I have this makes taking the dig wrong there. Who is Hoglandia at war with? No one that I'm aware of. Watsy usually. Fair. So they kept Essence Scatter in hand. It's, uh, yeah, so like... I'm under a lot of pressure from this Bone Crusher Giant. If I had sequenced my discard spells better, I wouldn't be. 
which sucks. Like, I have to take four to kill this here. I have Essence Scatter and then one card I don't know in hand. Might as well grab a mountain here because I have Urborg in play. So if they scatter this, I'll play Rider. I think it's more important that Rider resolve because my health total is so low. Could go either way on that though. Uh, Shrieking, Shrieking Affliction, Enya, is very similar to the rack. It's the second rack that they play in Modern. Uh, what's it called? Korax would be a great draw right now, huh? So we got plenty of cards to bring it back into play. That being said, Murderous Rider, Muta Vault, Femlurker here, relatively quick clocks. Smack him for four. Murderous Rider dies. <clears throat> so this can take the last card out of their hand and then the beginning of their upkeep, they they uh, they take two, or we get ionized. That works too. Just gonna fire up Muta Vault and attack here. I have a Fen Lurker in my bin. Murderous Rider unfortunately goes back into my deck, so I can't really do anything with that. I assume they're gonna scry at the end of my turn. Okay, so I'm gonna let their scry resolve so they don't know they're losing their card in their hand. And then. While they're still tapped out, I'm going to have them discard. I'm going to pick Fenlurker back up. Instant speed discards a treat. Get that, get that right on out of there. They had a lightning strike in hand. That's pretty good. They scried one top here. We'll see if they have a proactive card or not. Stomp is very, very good. Good, bad, and ugly. Thank you for the 16 months. Welcome back. Yeah, that's pretty unfortunate. Well, I don't think I can go to two here, right? They have Ionized, Lightning Strike, Wild Slash, and Bone Crusher Giant in their deck. I think I'm going to attack with this, and then if they block, I'll Fatal Push. I'm go to four. If they don't block, we'll play Fenlurker Pass. Then we can jump with Fenlurker and Fatal Push. They might overthink this here and not block.
Oh, God. <coughs> well, shoot. Yeah, the fact that I... The fact that I missequenced our... Uh, our discard spells to start here probably going to cost us this game. It took, like, an extra four points of damage I didn't have to take. I don't know, JMP. Both the formats are still, like, still pretty fresh. I don't know. I like that Historic doesn't have as many mana elves in it. I think mana elves kind of suck. It has four less of those, so that's nice. I like deeper card pools though too, so like Pioneer's got a lot deeper card pool than Historic, which is great. Yeah, yeah, if we would have hit a Crocs in the top quarter of our deck, it would have it would have destroyed them. Still, still not just out of it, but in a less good spot than we otherwise could be. All right, so we're going to run back the they end step scry. We we call against command after they scry. I mean, there's kind of a way, right? Like, the <clears throat> the the reason why the red mid-range deck is doing well in Pioneer is because, is likely because it's playing a bunch of Goblin Chain Whirlers along in a format where people are playing a bunch of Elves. Okay, Davriel's very good here. Puts them on a four-turn clock, even faster than that with Fenlurker. Woof. So, probably did. Yep. Born Joel. Yeah, we needed a Crocs earlier. Um, I could have also bought myself a little bit more life, a little bit more breathing room if I had sequenced my discard spells better, though, too. I don't know if this is a duress matchup. It probably is. Do I want these fatal pushes? I guess I need to be able to kill their bone crusher giants, huh? Kalitas is probably just fine as a beater. I guess Bone Crusher like kills their borrowers and then trades with theirs. That's probably fine to include. I have counter spells. Dress is probably fine. Let's try. Let's try this. I mean, Graveyard Hate's not particularly... Like, one, I think statements like X is on the rise is nonsense. You don't have access to empirical data that shows trends like that. So that's not something you can know. And two, um, the Ascendancy deck doesn't really lean on the Graveyard, even if what you're saying was true. Like, just Dig Through Time is the only thing that uses the Graveyard, and a lot of Graveyard Hate's not particularly good against that. My, my two picks for combo decks that are waiting to be busted in this format would be Kesis and, and Descendancy. Dig through, dig through time's really good.
Yep. <clears throat> Alright, so this does one damage to them, they discard a card, they mill the top card of their deck, we gain a life. Nice, Maven. Yeah, Soul Flayer, Soul Flayer's real good. I was, I was thinking about it this morning, and it's kind of, like, funny slash sad that, like, Eldraine Standard was one of the most mediocre ones we've had in a long time. And we had, like, three big standard events. Like, there were three Mythic Championships during Eldraine Standard. And, like, now that Theros has been released and it's possibly good again, um, there's, like, no big standard tournaments in sight. Mila! Enjoy your enjoy your keep in Hoglandia. Forty eight months is an incredibly long time. That's like almost an entire Declan's worth of time. Giga Druid, thank you for the prime support. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Do I have any strong opinions on Underworld Breach? Well, Underworld Breach is a card that a lot of people have been saying is incredibly broken, so I can only assume it's definitely fine. My only comment on things related to Tulsi Gabbard and the Hillary Clinton thing is I think too many people get caught up on the verbiage of saying that someone is an asset. Like, you can be an asset to someone without directly working for them, right? Like, you can be pushing for things or doing things that make someone else happy without being employed by them. Like, a lot of people took being called an asset to being called a spy or being on their payroll, which is just, like, patently not true. Just, like, not, not how that works. Standard deck list submissions are $10 for subscribers. I didn't, I didn't really have strong feelings on Tulsi either way, up until the point she voted present on impeachment, at which point I was solidly in the screw her camp. Whether, whether or not she wanted to vote for or against impeachment, showing up and then voting present is explicitly not doing her job. And people who don't do their job need to get the flip out of Congress, whether or not they have a D or an R next to their name. Crockett, thanks for the three quarters of a year. Welcome back. Yeah, I mean, adventure cards are just two-for-ones, right? So, like, two-for-oneing our deck that's trying to one-for-one -one people under the ground is real good. Yeah, I mean, you can... Wait, turn... You can turn two people... Oh, you're saying, like, no... You're saying, like, turn one Emery off of Moxes? You can turn two people with just Moxes, too. You don't need the uh, Tormod script. So, like, to turn two people, you need turn one Emery, and then turn two play Ascendancy, and then you can loop the Moxes, so you don't need the Tormat script. Yeah, that's actually a really good, like, Hoaglandia context example. I'm an asset to Wizards of the Coast. Like, I make Wizards of the Coast money. I do things that are helpful to them. Do they want to work with me or directly associate with me? Definitely not, but I'm certainly an asset to their business.
yeah, voting voting present is the same as abstaining. She was in the room when the vote took place, but she didn't actually didn't actually vote for or against it. <clears throat> Buying boxes of magic cards is never the correct answer to is this a good is this a good way to get the cards I want? The, the answer is never buy boxes of magic cards. The answer is always buy singles. The only reason to buy boxes is if you are going to be drafting or if you enjoy opening booster packs of magic. If you derive joy from opening things of foil, then spend your money doing things you enjoy. Watsy made an adventure card that was once and a mana dark. Gosh, that would be so offensive. If you are both an asset and a liability to Watsy, does that make you an accessibility? <laughs> oh, I should escalate this, right? Because the Urborg doesn't do anything. Totally should escalate this. Maybe I'm supposed to save this for killing Brazen Borrower. It's very possible too. Gosh, we're super dead, huh? These adventure creatures just slaughter us. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how I ever beat this glory bringer. There's a chance that the only good thing about this archetype in modern is a staring bridge, believe it or not. There's a good chance that we might not do, do too well here. Okay, that sounds great. No problems, AGH. Have a sword back. Do any thoughts on Blue Red and Soul and Pioneer? It's a good getcha deck. It's a deck where like when all the pieces come together, it looks really impressive. And when the pieces don't come together, it's an unplayable pile of draft chaff. They have a link to the deck list I referred to in modern. You mean eight rack? And they just Google just Google eight rack. It's like a tier four deck that people have played in modern off and on for a while. I, for one, welcome our new ramp overlords. Think I just want a Croxa here. Although maybe maybe it's right to get Davriel going. Maybe it's right to go like tap Fabled Passage Land Thought Seize this turn. You're playing a card with essentially no text. I mean, it. It deals damage. This is our win condition. It's like playing a creature. <clears throat> Instead of attacking, we deal three per turn.
Okay, so they are they are in fact the Lotus Field deck. Okay, their hand's doing a whole lot of nothing going on. Do 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 do. Almost auto pass. Need to crack this fable passage though. I'm gonna grab his mountain here as a second red source because Croxa does require double red. Croxa plus K command is okay. It's not super impressive. Yeah, Leyline will be good out of the board because it, it turns off uh, turns off their ability to dig through time two. That's what I need. I need to dig through time here or like pour over the pages. Yeah, there's a good chance we just like play Vanifier every stream that we play standard and I'd kind of be okay with that. I'm also planning on playing, um, what's what I'm searching for? I'm also planning on streaming over the weekend too, so like. Planning to be live Saturday, Sunday. I'm interested to see what the numbers look like this weekend. There's no major magic events going on this weekend, but, um, what's it called? Is having, a, is having their open beta release, Rune Terra. I wonder if that's going to hurt Magic's numbers. Yeah, I think we just Avriel them and then draw step K command them here. I could, I could Croxa, but like this is five. So like, they take five during their upkeep, during their draw step. We like, make them discard their card. All right, Duress sounds good. Brutality is good. Leyline of the Void is good. Fatal Push is definitely not good. Murderous Rider is not good. Bone Crusher is probably better than one Murderous Rider. He shocks them at least. <clears throat> I mean, Rune Terra is going to be successful in large part if it is because it's going to pull from. It's very good against Critical Mass Combo next Beetle. You're not wrong. Um, in in part because it's going to pull from a new player base, right? Like, Rune Terra is definitely a game that, like, Rune Terra can be successful while magic still thrives and survives, right? There's also, there's also the possibility that, like, you know, Rune Terra, even if it's successful, could stand to help magic in the long run, too, because Rune Terra is a card game that will likely get a bunch of new people who have previously League of Legends players to try card games. And some of them will discover that they like card games. And then those people might eventually look for other things that aren't Rune Terra. Yeah, it could very, very well be a gateway game. Yeah, Urborg, Urborg turning out all of our fabled passages here is great. 
That's kind of how I got into Kirk Gibson's first turn. Yep. Lyra Dawnbringer. I was, was going to keep taking cards out of their hand. <clears throat> Think my opponent's having fun yet? How much for an all pod mom stream? Uh, 50 bucks per 90 minute segment. Man, and with these with these fabled passages, I'm actually gonna be able to escape this on four, right? Like they they have to discard here, and then I'm gonna get to crack both passages, escape this back next turn. Oh, you're saying like Pioneer and stuff too? Pioneer and stuff changes the dynamic because the Pioneer deck, the Pioneer queue is currently kind of inflated. It's a little bit backed up since so we've been doing a lot of standard. So we're doing two Pioneer today and two Pioneer tomorrow. <clears throat> Whenever Enchanted Land becomes tapped for mana, its controller puts the top three cards or library into the graveyard. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, if Rune Terra is successful and it puts pressure on Arena, it could be something that causes them to invest more resources and get things like Pioneer onto the platform sooner or more of a priority. Hey, Slui, thanks for 19 months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. <clears throat> Gosh, if I could play Pioneer on Arena... I would. I would delete my, my Windows VM so quickly. I have a dig through time here. Looks like they're digging through time. Chronic, chronic flooding enabling their dig through time is kind of sweet. Yeah, man, the the president of the United States, Donald Trump, has been, like, admitting to things he's done that are illegal on camera for, like, a long time. The question has always been, will, will he be held accountable? The answer is probably no, because he has an R next to his name, and they currently control the Senate, but, you know, we'll see. All right. We kill them relatively quickly here. We get to Brutality them next turn and then play Shrieking Affliction and then attack for six. <clears throat> yeah, they're trying not to alienate parts of their base, Bill Nye. We live, we live in a world where Trump and people like him have created the narrative that the truth is subjective. Because if the truth is subjective, they're not just wrong. They just agree. They can just agree to disagree because they see things differently. I don't know what you're referring to, Wit Racer.
Okay, so uh, Fen Lurker, if we take the only card out of their hand, means that this attacks for nine. <clears throat> which is nice. People, oh, but he's made good policies. Yeah, not really. Those are those are people that are just trying to hide behind. People, people that say things like that tend to, one, not understand who his policies are really helping more, or two, are saying that to try and justify it to themselves and others, the decision that they're making to support a rapist and a pathological liar and a bigot. I mean, to be fair, his policies did lower taxes. They just lowered taxes for people who make incredible amounts of money far more than they lowered taxes for people who make normal amounts of money. And the, de the deregulation policies have been really bad. His policies of, like, fighting with California to, like, not let them pass emission standards because, you know, hashtag Republicans are the party of state rights. I don't really care about Murderous Rider, right? I think I just take the Soren here. Maybe it's right to take the Dusk Legion Zealot just because it kind of two for ones us. Yeah, people, because people are dumb catch up fights. People, people don't understand how to read trend lines. Like, if you want to, if you want to understand what the economy looks like, you have to like look at large trends and like look at like Obama inheriting a downward trending economy and then turning it into an upward trend and uh, what's it called? Uh, Trump inheriting an upward trending economy and then managing to not screw it up as of yet. Trump, Trump to, in Trump's defense, Trump is really good at inheriting things. That is, that is one of his strong suits. He's good at inheriting things from other people. Correct. I'm... I'm excited for the eventual dip that has to come at the end of like, like you can't be an endless upward trend. Like even if we don't have like an 08 style fallout, like there's going to be some kind of downward trend at the end of all of this. And I'm, I'm excited for if that happens after a Dem wins the general for them to be like, oh my God, look, there's no faith because of Dem won or something like that. I didn't say he was good with the things that he inherited. I just said the action of actually inheriting things he was good at. Because he does that frequently. He's definitely not good with what he inherits. That's almost certainly the case. I think I just pass here. Correct. Yeah, they're gonna get blamed regardless. Miller is exactly correct. So they have a black castle and a murderous rider in hand, and then two cards I don't know. Yeah, I really want them to like jam with these muta bolts, huh? Okay, so because I have this herb work, I get to leave these fabled passages uncracked. Which gives me an incredible amount to pinpoint targeting with these with these fable passages with these uh, fatal pushes, which is great. Croxa, eh? Do I want to Croxa them? I feel like no, not yet. I'm just gonna go ahead and jam this. If I recall, we're in the longest continuous period of economic growth. I don't have the metrics offhand, but I believe that. We've been we've been steadily upward trending for like a decade or so now, right? Like 08 was the last time we really had things fall out. I 
Hey, silly cheese. Thanks for the 13 months. Welcome back. So they have a castle plus one other card in their hand right now. I'm new to this channel. I asked a question about a deck yesterday. It was timed out with no explanation of what I could done. Let me look at let me look at what she said. Hey Jeff, do you think Paradise Druid could be good here? Okay, okay, so in general, what I'm looking for when people make card recommendations is one something that I hate doing and that I hate when other people do is I hate when people sit there and expect the streamer to tell them their ideas are bad. Instead of me telling you your card recommendation is bad, tell me why it's good. Tell me what kind of problem my deck has and why that problem is solved by the card recommendation you are making. Magic's a game where there's tens of hundreds of millions of possibilities of cards you can put into a given deck and you have to have some kind of reasonable way to mitigate and narrow it down to which ones you actually want to play. So if you're just like, well, this seems good, there could be dozens of things that seem good. You need to be more specific and focused than that. In my, in my experience, the best way to talk about why things are good or bad is to say, well, my deck has this problem and this card focuses to address that problem in this way. And if you sit there and think about cards, if you think about deck building in that manner, you'll often realize that the cards you're thinking about trying don't actually serve a purpose in the deck that you're playing. Mute of Alt. Mute of Alt, just making sure there are other things don't attack here is great. I think anyone who's watched any amount of any amount of magic on Twitch, you, you've probably been in channels where like the channels just evolve into the streamer just sitting there like, oh, they don't even talk about the gameplay. They just sit there and talk about like why card suggestions that are being made are bad. Hey, Robin, thanks for the year and a half. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Are you liking THP? I actually really, really am, Ribbon. I think the the average design in THP is actually really well done. There's a lot of cards in the set that have like that are impactful without being overbearing, like Oko. I think they I think overall the designs in this set kind of got knocked out of the park. I think they did. Did a really good job overall. Well, I can bring Croxa back here, huh? Yeah, that's totally just the play, right? Just, like, put my 6-6 six, six into play. Passage has been good at enabling Crocs as well. So this will come in and hit him for three. That's going to kill them relatively quickly. This deck's a lot better when we draw this card, huh? Weird. This card, this card was really good. Speaking of this card, in standard the other day, this card was really good too. We played it in a red-black mid-range deck. It was quite excellent. Yeah, Urborg, Urborg plus Passage specifically has also been very good. Agree. Weird that they drew a card here against my deck full of discard spells. <clears throat> so if I attack with this, their death toucher just gets me. That doesn't sound very appealing. Davriel, domes them for two. And, like, they could attack Gifted Aetherborn into Davriel here if they want. But that, uh, 
That lets me attack with Crocs the following turn, which is great. Knight of the Ebon Legion is pretty good. And remember, the way Croxa is templated, um, if they don't have a hand, his trigger deals three to them when he attacks. <clears throat> So I'm going to go ahead and attack here. If they block with Knight of the Ebon Legion and then try to pump, I will shock it in response. Choose target player. I choose you. I choose you. <clears throat> I want to say I've loved the Red Black Aristocrat standard deck on your website, confirming the constructed events like a madman. Any matchup for any advice for Grawl monsters, that one's been a tough one. Uh, historically speaking, that matchup's largely revolved around um, whether or not you can get Priest into play. My main piece of advice would be make sure you're boarding out Chandra in that matchup because Chandra is a card that doesn't line up well into Questing Beast. Uh, Urborg's actually a really good draw here because it means that I can escape Crocs, Crocs after I trade it with this Gifted Aetherborn. Maybe I'm supposed to fire up Mutavolt and attack with both of these as well. Yeah, even though Priest is like your best card there, she's not, she's not stellar. Like, even, even when they don't have Questing Beast, they're good at attacking her down. So I assume they're going to trade with Gifted Aetherborn here. Yeah, if they only had lands, they would have been dead there. So, Legendary Rule lets this other one die. Go ahead and escape this back from the underworld here. Make them discard their card. All right, that one was land. The underworld is really leaky, yep. So it's not a good scene. They should just be dead here, right? Yeah, they're dead. So Crox's, Crox's trigger kills them because they don't have a card in their hand. Titan, Titan was really good there. Instrumental in winning the game. Uh, so they're not the black, the black aggro deck that has recursive threats. I don't think Leyline's very good. Languish could potentially be fine. Collective Brutality's probably worse than Bone Crusher Giant. <clears throat> no. Well, they, they had two cards in their hand the previous turn. How many Theros cards have we played in Pioneer so far? Not many. We've only done like two. This is our third Pioneer deck since Theros drop. We played uh, the Escape Phoenix and Blue Red Eldrazi, but that archetype's just been a little bit bad overall. And we played Heliod combo in uh, an Abzan shell. Yeah, Davriel might honestly be the cut. He's an okay clock, but... 
he gets attacked down in a matchup like this. Which like a vicious rumors too. Try let's try this. Yeah, honestly, Mazer, I'd be kind of surprised if they ban elves at this point. As much as I would like them to, that would be an outcome that I would not be expecting. Wow! Scared of my Titan, huh, opponent? Did my did my Titan do you wrong? Titan made them sad, chat. They see me lurking. Do 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 do. How do you feel about Reddit wanting creeping chill or stinkway to ban because of the ox? I think watching people discuss modern makes me smile. Because modern's a rancid format full of stains, and no matter what you do, it will continue to be a rancid format full of stains. And I I derive pleasure now from people acting like that could ever possibly be different. Oh, you know what? I could bring in libation. It's a good call. I do, I do have two libations on the sideboard for, for the old enchantments. It's also fine against like bogles. Bogles. Awkward that we drew a bunch of our non-black lands this game. Definitely being a little bit tough on trying to cast our spells. We are in game two. We are up a game. Dang it. Dang it. Okay, Thought Seize is not bad. So I get to go. Thought Seize you. Take your best spell. So you're not casting Champion of Dust or else we'll take your Murderous Rider. I get to Murderous Rider, their Champion of Dusk. I get to kill their Sorin. Nope, oh, that's the wrong one. This is, what I'm about to say is going to sound like pretty peak magic player. So I apologize for it a little bit. But like the, the problem with modern, in my opinion, is that I like when, I like when the things that happen in modern right now are things that are fringe playable not the defining feature, if that makes sense. And I know that sounds like that super peak hipster magic sounding, like, but I, re I really feel that way. Like, when when neat decks that, like, one turn kill you exist on the fringes and aren't very good, they're kind of cool and they're novel. When they happen every game and it's the norm, I don't want that to be the norm. It's like, remember in GRN Standard, when we had the Nexus deck in that format, the, the, the Amulet Nexus deck. The Amulet, Amulet Nexus deck's a good example of that, I feel like. Like, that deck was super neat. That was a good draw. Was super neat and novel, and I was glad it existed. But then, like, they... You, you want the bad decks to be good. I mean, like, the bad decks to be good is what modern is, right? Yeah, you know, I, I honestly think that that modern moderns pushed push more and more towards like the legacy model where like the power differential once upon a time like the power differential between the second best thing in modern and the 10th best thing in modern was fairly close and I feel like that gap has widened more and more and now not to go full saffron olive here for a moment but I do think that gap widening is in part due to the London Mulligan. Like, I do think the London Mulligan makes good decks better and makes bad decks worse. 
Like, I think that is something that happens as a result of that rule. I don't, I don't think that's inherently a bad thing. I do, however, think it's something that requires the format to kind of be rebalanced around that happening, though. Okay, so I'm going to fetch a mountain here. It is not unlike unlike the current economy. So I'm going to Vicious Rumors before I Fatal Push them here. And this is important because I want them to discard a card not having certainty if their Ghostfire Blade is going to live. So like what, what they discard here could be changed based on the fact that I'm about to Fatal Push their thing. Hey, Warfrist. Well, good to have you back. Thanks for keeping me around. Okay, so they're going to be empty-handed, right? We're going to get to... We're going to get to go Fatal Push this. Crocs take their last card. And then, like... um, And again, Fabled Passage just looking stellar. Oh, I don't have a red source. Maybe I'm supposed to have two mountains in this deck. So I could I could actually put this back into play if I have a second red source, but I only have one basic mountain. So I actually can't do that currently. Oh, I should have played the Muta Vault last turn. I could have attacked with this this turn otherwise. Alright, these are these are lava spikes at least though, so we got that going for us. The problem is with double ghost fire blade, any threat they draw is gonna kill us very quickly. So I need to I need to hope they brick for a bit, or I need to draw a red source ASAP. Yeah. So like we're taking five here, we're gonna be dead very shortly. Oh, that makes sense. Fatal push, murder strider. Yeah, the fact, the fact that I don't have a second basic mountain is probably going to lose us this game. If I'd have had a second basic mountain, we'd have put this into play on four, and then, like, we'd have certainly attacked them to death by now. I don't think it's fair to say that the mulligan rule is inherently bad for these older formats so much as it just changes how they need to be managed. And you could argue that like, if you're like a purist or whatever you want to call it, that like, that means it's bad if it has to change how the formats are played. But I don't think that's inherently necessarily a negative thing. Whoever built this mana base sucks. I did adjust your mana to be fair. You didn't have fabled passages in what you sent me and passage is good with push and it's good with this so i added them i was like oh red's a splash i forgot that this is technically a double red card on the back half when i adjusted the mana that was that was my mistake forgot forgot to account for that Rumors is actually probably worse than Collective Brutality here, just because Brutality can kill their stuff. This, this is the other reason there's only one basic mountain in the deck. Drawing basic mountain in your opener is kind of just like the stains. It's like, this is, this is not great. Yeah, I guess we keep this. This is not a deck that really likes to mulligan a whole bunch. I, I agree, Lord Aaron. 
That's something that uh, I believe it was uh, April King had talked about on Twitter. The Lo the London Mulligan doesn't create problems in and of itself. The London Mulligan, however, does take a giant spotlight and shine it on problems that have always existed in Magic, but were thought of as not being a big deal because variants masked what they were a lot of the time. Thanks all an Aether Sphere Harvester there. That's interesting. Yep. Oh, <clears throat> so if they have a stepper denial, we're probably just dead. If they don't have a stepper denial, we could Bone Crusher plus Culligan's Command to team up to kill the skilled animator here. Because if we take the animator off the table, the Dark Steel Citadel stops being a creature. So the London Mulligan doesn't create negative play experiences. It in fact explicitly removed negative play experiences. The London Mulligan does, however, increase the frequency at which negative play experiences occur with other decks that have already existed. So that, that again, I think is the important distinction. It's not, it's not actually creating them itself, but it is, however, increasing the frequency at which they happen. And I've freak I've long argued that it doesn't matter how often these things happen. The thing that's not okay is that they happen at all. Like people are like, oh, so are you okay with Neoshell brand happening some of the time? The answer is no, I'm not. I think I think the fact that I've talked about this before, I think the fact that Neoshell brands allowed to exist at all in modern is a failure of the ban list. And that's subjective, that's my opinion. You can feel free to disagree with me on that, on that subjective point, but I've always been pretty adamant about things like that. Why is it blue black control the website yet? I don't believe in the blue black control deck. We definitely ran good with it. I would need I would need to play it again to put it up on the website for sure. So I took the opportunity to kill the ginger brute there because that's the one that's evasive. We'll play out this bone crusher giant. Next turn we can fatal push their three three and block their muta vault and then take two, and then we're on a on a on a four turn clock. What would you ban in that deck? Simeon Spirit Guide. This is... Someone asked me about my opinion on the Scissors deck earlier today. It's one of those decks where, like, when you play it, it's, like, aggressively mediocre because your stuff often doesn't come together. But I swear, when we play against it, I can't remember the last time I beat the Scissors deck. Like, we just always have all of the things against us. Yeah, I think the tw Splinter Twin getting banned was definitely like the mark of the beginning of the end of the modern format I really enjoyed. But I also don't think that like banning Splinter Twin caused the issue. Splinter Twin was just like a line in the sand. And like there were a lot of things that happened in addition to banning Twin that kind of sent the format on a spiral. Like the best, the best example to give, and again, these are subjective, so feel free to disagree, is that in Modern, the last deck I loved, for example, was Elves. That was the last deck that existed in the format that I really enjoyed playing. And then Modern Horizons happened, 
and there weren't even busted cards that got printed in Modern Horizons. It's just, as the card pool got bigger, my fringe deck became less playable because there were more things that hated on it. So Plague Engineer, Lava Dart, and Renin 6 are three cards for Modern Horizons that I don't think any of them are overpowered, but I do think that they're cards that serve to push things like the Elf deck I previously enjoyed playing out of the format. Do you believe in when Jund is good, Modern is good? I think that's actually probably an okay barometer. Because, like, the idea of when Jund is good is basically saying when removal spells for creatures are relevant, the format's in a good spot. And I think I'm inclined to agree with that. That's, that's basically what you're saying, is when removal spells are relevant... The format's in a good spot. I think that's true. The best thing about Magic is largely the combat system and the strategic value that comes with the combat system. So saying that Magic's at its best when the combat system is relevant, I think is accurate. What are the rules on bolster again? Choose a creature with the least, whatever another non tough creature into the battlefield of your control, bolster one. Choose a creature with the least toughness among creatures you control, put a 1-1 one -one counter on it. If multiple creatures are tied for least toughness, you, you get to pick. You know, honestly, Rhino, I don't really know. And I, I'm not really from an informed position to speak on it because like for a lot of recent memory, I've not, I've not really worked on modern. So I just haven't enjoyed it. So in, in general, I try not to speak to things that I'm not super familiar with. A hey, turtle. Thanks for the half year. I appreciate it. I am enjoying Theros Standard. I think they think they did a really good job with the format overall. All right, so I think I just want to get the Titan while I still can get a card out of their hand. And we probably want to Fatal Push. Gosh, do we want to Fatal Push the Ballista or do we want to Fatal Push Kindry Spirit at this point? It's probably Ballista, right? Because I can't murder his rider ballista and get my get my thing. So there. Knight of the White Orchid here is gonna let them grab a land. Well, I mean, I'm murderous ridering something else, chat. So, like two things are dying here. Uh we are two and two. We are currently playing the fifth batch. In the, in the burrito match. We'll kill this. We take six down to eight. Next turn, I'm going to take six again down to two, but I'm going to get to Murderous Rider, the Anafenza, so that's nice. They have one card left in hand, but they also have this clue, which is a card on board. Okay. Huh. I think I'm just supposed to murder his rider this turn. I don't know. Getting the last card of their hand is super appealing. And then honestly, I might just murder his rider as a 2 3 life linker.
Is there anything wrong with Eldrian Standard 3.0? Yeah, I, I didn't really enjoy Eldrian Standard 3.0 because traditional mid-range and aggro just weren't playable. The only aggressive decks, aggressive decks that existed in that format were decks like Cheesing People with Ember Cleave that were basically combo decks. Why would I destroy a clue, which is a card draw they have to spend two mana for, when I could just take a card out of their hand? Seems backwards. Oh, they draw Walking Ballista. That's unfortunate. We're probably dead here. Need to get our languages in. Davriel, pretty exceptionally bad against decks that play to the board. To dual land. So we're going to cut to Avriel. Probably just a couple of thought seasons here, too. Maybe don't need all the collective brutalities. Seems fine. So you let's do this. Oh, huh. Yeah, maybe libation is okay. Maybe. I don't know. We have a lot of ways to kill Daxos. I don't know what I want to cut, though. I guess Fen Lurker is not a super relevant body. Hey, Sniper. Thanks for the five months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. Hope you're having a good one wherever you are. Born and physical. I'm doing all right. It's still early here. It's snowing. And it's supposed to continue snowing for like the next two days. Basically. We have snow showers on the forecast until it is light snow, rain, or snow showers until Saturday morning. Which is kind of wild. Mean, mean roads were plowed this morning. Went to and from dropping Declan off with no problem. That's the other thing, though. Like, there's not even supposed to be... Like, it's just, like, little bits of flurries. It's not, like, an extreme amount of snow at any point. <laughs> you are not wrong, Turnpike Bear. It definitely sucks the fun out of the game. Hey, Reed. Thanks for re-upping the Prime. I appreciate it. Welcome back. I mean, and that's just not possible, Lord Aaron. So they can they can force a flatter power level by managing the format with a ban list, but just <coughs> how how card games work and has have more combinations of things is like if left unchecked, things do just get more and more powerful. We have a larger vehicle, so it's not too bad. We have uh, a Nissan Pathfinder that is four wheel drive.
Hashtag, hashtag America. Adanto Vanguard. Cast Boros Charm. All right, the question is, can we Boros Charm them enough times to make this thing die? I feel like we're pretty dead. I don't know how I beat this hand and then also beat this Adanto Vanguard. Yeah, like, I can't beat this Gideon. I can't beat Heliod Ballista. I can't, I can't beat, sorry, I actually can beat Heliod Ballista. I can't beat Heliod Adanto Vanguard, though. Like, they Heliod up the Vanguard and, like, Gideon also makes it life. Yeah, like, like the, the combo is actually not the issue here. The issue is that either of these with Vanguard just give them an unlimited supply of life, right? Yeah, yeah, we're very dead. So similar to how this deck plays out in modern... I felt like this deck was pretty mediocre in this format as well. For formats of Magic today revolve largely around the board, and these decks that are hoping the opponent doesn't get on the board are, are ones that just come up short pretty frequently. The matchups that felt reasonable were the ones where Davriel wasn't any sort of pressure, but again, those are the types of matchups that are going to be good for us anyway, so our opponents aren't playing to the board. Croxa overall actually kind of impressed me. I wouldn't be surprised if there's a playable deck with this card in this format, just because this is a card where, in addition to pressuring their hand, it also creates a board presence. Like, I wouldn't be super surprised if there's, like, some kind of iteration of the Dredgeless Dredge deck that plays either Croxa or Uro to good effect. Because those decks fill their graveyard up anyways. Um, all right. At any rate, we're going to roll on into a second Pioneer deck here this morning. I want to work through some of the backlog in the queue here over the next few days. We are going to kick the tires on some Saram Ascendancy Paradoxical Outcome Combo. I'm going to hit a quick ad roll while I run to the restroom and then get set up for this next one. We'll be back in just a few minutes. Don't go anywhere today, folks. Thanks for hanging out. <laughs> 